Aloha and happy, happy Aloha Friday, actually. Welcome to the show, Lillian's Vegan World, where we explore everything about veganism and the plant-based diet. And uh, today I'm actually very excited to introduce my guest to you all. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. How are you? Dave Molinero. I saw you on a show on one of the Think Tech shows a couple of days ago. Yes, you did. Thank yes, you very much. Yes, it was a great show. I did Thanks, actually watch that. it and gave it a thumbs up. Thanks, I appreciate <laughs> that. That's good to know. <laughs> Dave, you're working at... I work, I'm a project manager with HCAT, the Hawaii Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies, and I do uh, microgrid project development and hydrogen fuel cell development for the Air Force. Awesome. HCAT. So that can also stand for How Cute Art Thou Today? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. I'm glad you <laughs> figured out that acronym perfect, okay. yes. <laughs> so you're working in renewable energy. I am. Um, nothing really to do with veganism. Well, there might be a good segue for vegan cooking with uh -huh. hydrogen gas. Mm -hmm. um, we've actually done it before. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, maybe that could be a future show for you, Lillian, that you can cook using hydrogen <laughs> gas. I would love to test out yeah. something like that. I never have but definitely I would be up for the challenge. Good. <laughs> so, Dave, um, thank you so much for joining the show today. I've actually wanted to get you on for quite some time. This is only my fourth episode, but um, you are very interesting because you are kind of living La Vida vegan in your home sweet home. That I am. <laughs> I have I, a com completely you, vegan home, which is, um, I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's was a difficult, quite a little bit of a difficulty uh, challenged in getting into into it, but now that we're into it, I love it. So interesting. Yes. So this is something I think perhaps your friends, family, I know mine definitely want to hear, you know, how someone like you deals or works around living in a vegan home when you yourself are not vegan, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. I'm not vegan. Um, mm -hmm. I do eat a substantially greater amount of vegetable okay. and plant-based foods than what I have in the past. Um, but the transition, and the transition hasn't been difficult. Um, there's a lot of great options out there, uh, which was, um, you go from being, you know, normal American diet, if you will, mm -hmm. or meat and fish and cheese and dairy. Uh, there are a lot of really good substitutes out there, and uh, as you and I have talked about before, um, and that makes the transition easier. Um, being able to uh, have that one meal a day, if you will, that I cheat and go back to what I normally eat <laughs> mm -hmm. is, is really good too. But um, no, the transition's been great. There's also been a certain motivating factor in me having the house vegan. Okay, well, explain to us, how did you end up living in a home that's vegan when you yourself are not? How did I end up? Well, I was asked and I committed to it, I think it's very important. But, uh, you were asked by whom? I was asked by somebody very special. Okay. And this person is on a plant-based diet? This person is vegan and okay. on a plant-based diet, mm -hmm. and it, I wanted to accommodate them in wow. continuing vegan. So, okay. But like I said, the transition, which it started out a little difficult, mm -hmm. but as I've gotten into it, it it's easy. So, and okay. um, uh, the... Um, the other person in my life is a fantastic chef and very talented. Yeah, so she sounds it, awesome. Yeah, she is very, very awesome. And uh, that makes, it, makes the transition very easy. So, <laughs> so <laughs> are we fooling anybody here? <laughs> so um, that means you have, say, breakfast and dinner at, at home. Yeah. When you do have breakfast and dinner at home, yeah. it is vegan. What would you normally eat for breakfast? So for home? breakfast at home, it, I would normally eat uh, toast, um, yogurt, fruit, uh, perhaps cereal, mm -hmm. and it used to be, you know, regular dairy-based, like dairy milk. So okay. uh, the transition to soy, it wasn't a difficult one, and mm -hmm. instead of eating or drinking regular milk, I'd do soy milk, okay. and found it just to be as flavorful and healthy. Same thing with the yogurts as well, or I would have regular Greek yogurt. I have switched to soy-based yogurts, and uh, in fact, I prefer the soy-based. I don't really prefer really? the almond or coconut. I'd Okay. I don't really prefer the taste, mm -hmm. um, but um, oh, the transition is easy. I normally drink juice, have vegetables or fruits in the morning, excuse mm -hmm. me, so it, it really wasn't a difficult switch. Okay. Um, lunch, I usually go out, I work downtown, as you know, and usually even, you know, eat a 
normal lunch when I'm home for dinner, it's vegan. So okay, yeah. just going back to breakfast. So you you did explain how you uh, substituted the the yogurt and mm -hmm. stuff like that. There are other things that you've probably learned to learned um, that you you didn't really think about before. For example, when buying bread, bread actually does have a lot of animal products in it. It does. It can have anything from um, animal fat to honey, which yes. is something I've explained on the show that not many vegans consume anymore. So little things like that, you're learning to read labels. I do read a lot of labels mm. now, um, again, to make sure that I'm not buying anything that's, that's uh, not vegan. Um, mm. but do again, you get into trouble if you do? Never, because I don't make <laughs> any mistakes. <laughs> Um, but again, they're really great substitutes out there. One thing I, I failed to mention too is I like butter, for example. There's great mm -hmm. vegan options for butter that, that um, I find very, very tasty, as well as cheese. And I think you've previewed a few cheeses on your show, which mm -hmm. have been really, really good. So it makes a transition um, to a plant-based diet. I, I've always been one to realize that the closer you, your food source is to the earth, the mm -hmm. better it is for you. So mm -hmm. um, Try not to eat a lot of processed foods, but mm -hmm. um, it's just, I think it's common sense that if you eat, you know, fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, uh, the less processing, the better it is for you too. So, for sure. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this for? Oh boy, what, a year, year and a half? Okay. Yeah. Do you feel any better or have, I, yes. have you noticed any changes? Well, um, I notice when I eat vegan at home, especially at dinner, um, I usually come home pretty tired, a uh, long day at the office, mm -hmm. and have a vegan meal. And one thing I ate... And, and you I come home to this wonderful woman yes, who's waiting for you. Yes, this wonderful, wonderful, Making beautiful, all these yes. what, gorgeous dinners for you. Absolutely. Wow, you're lucky. You probably know her pretty, pretty well, too. So, um, And she, again, is a great cook. But the... Um, I don't have that sense of lethargy or bloating after you eat what I would, you know, if I'd come home and maybe have chicken mm -hmm. or steak. I don't have that. I'm actually really energized. Uh, you seem to digest a lot quicker. Yes. And um, yeah, so there's a definite difference. Um, I'm really curious to see. I'm on a test right now to see where my cholesterol goes in the next few months. But I've generally had a little bit of... Uh, Cholesterol elevation, um, elevated cholesterol, high cholesterol, mm -hmm. and I want to see uh, with this continued diet where it goes. So, but, awesome! Yeah, I, I've enjoyed it. I actually have lost weight too. Yes, so. yeah, I heard you. Yeah. you say that, um, Dave. You you sent in a photo for us about a breakfast that you sometimes eat in in your vegan home. So yes. let's take a look at the first picture. It's of the, the this is a British breakfast and it's been veganized now hmm. looking at it you just you wouldn't really think that that is a vegan dish would you where is the bloody mary that was in that photo <laughs> um you must <laughs> have cut it out maybe it was, uh, yeah, was, it, was it a mary? mimosa it was a, it was a mimosa that's correct <laughs> so, what i see is yes. a really great vegan pancakes which was a surprise that you can make pancakes yes um and maple syrup which i absolutely love mm -hmm. is vegan as well um there is a tofu scramble, which is great. Um, beans, which I enjoy, mm -hmm. and uh, hash brown potatoes, really great mushrooms, and tomatoes, which were excellent. So, yeah, that's, that was a very special treat. And again, with the mimosas that somehow <laughs> didn't make it into the picture. <laughs> so this is more like a, a Sunday brunch or yes. a, a weekend kind of breakfast, not something that you would eat on a regular Unfortunately, weekday. I don't get served this on a daily basis. Okay. So it must just be for special occasions very when special, you're yeah. like really good. Yeah. Which it usually isn't very, <laughs> usually not very good all the time. But that looks delicious. So yeah, um, you can vegan. You can vegan anything really. Um, do, you, do you drink alcohol? Yeah. With your fiance? Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. Enjoy bubbles, uh, red and white wine. Mm -hmm. um, understanding that. Most alcohol is vegan. Some isn't. Yes, yeah, some isn't. Some wines actually are not vegan. And they undergo a clarifying process called fining, which, and they use fining agents like milk protein, gelatin, um, fish bladder, and the one more, the egg whites. Have you ever seen a French chef cook a big pot of consomme mm -hmm. soup? Yes. Do you know what they do to, to refine the soup? They beat eggs, egg whites together, then 
add it to the to the broth, and the egg whites lift all the all the little the bits inside the I soup to clarify that. it. And it, I th I'm guessing it's the same sort of process. Could be. So, yeah, a lot of um, I I myself have the odd um, drink every now and again, and uh, it is something that I need to really be more aware of, think about because. Yeah. Yeah, do you really want to be drinking wine that has undergone something like that? Although there are no particles left from these uh, the these itself. fining sure. agents, but the process itself makes you think, oh, I'm not sure if I want to go there. So I did find actually a few apps that you can download onto really? your smartphone, and one of them is a Vegan Express uh, app. Hmm. So this is an on-the-run guide to what's vegan at popular fast food restaurants, as well as a listing of vegan alcohol and snacks. It has a 3.5 star rating. I actually had a quick look at this. Um, I only downloaded it recently, but the wine guide is quite interesting. It is limited, but definitely worth having a look into it. It's free and uh, yeah, it gives you an idea of what vegan products are out That's there. That's great. I, I know there's a, a desire for people that want to eat plant-based diets mm -hmm. and any help and assistance, especially through apps, would be great. Definitely. I was going to say if I can help, you know, administer to the wine collection by doing research on my own. Yeah, um, and tasting maybe would tasting be absolutely, absolutely would be, important, yes. detrimental to something like that. Absolutely. I would, I would volunteer myself. <laughs> You're true to your science and your, <laughs> your beliefs. Yes. So, um, Dave, what, is, what do you like and dislike about living in a vegan home? What do I like and dislike? Um, I don't Pros dislike, and cons. I don't mm -hmm. dislike anything. I, like I said, just getting into it was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, just learning about what I could and couldn't eat. I'll share with you one thing I do miss about the vegan diet is I love honey. And oh, okay. I was surprised to find out that, you know, it's, you assume honey is uh, plant-based, but it's not because it's produced by by bees, obviously, mm -hmm. and that was that was a bit of a change. Mm -hmm. um, do I truly miss anything? I yes, again, I miss a I miss a steak and a mm -hmm. you know good piece of fish. But again, I do that. You do when that I have outside the opportunity. of the home. So yeah. yeah, to say I'm missing anything, or if there's any challenges or trials or tribulations, yeah. no, not at all. Oh. So yeah. And does your amazing fiance does she um, try to turn you vegan? Does she? Is she asking you whether you're you're planning to, or, or does hmm. she just does she just let you do your own thing? That's my fiance. No, she has not. She's let me do my own thing, which is really the smart thing to do. Because mm -hmm. if I do decide to become vegan, it really needs to be my my Definitely. desire to do mm -hmm. so. And I think that's there's a really good lesson in that is. Um, to promote something, you really can't push it. You've got mm -hmm. to let people make up their own mind and decide. Yeah. And um, no pressure. No and pressure. No no pressure to the viewers. But we do want you to stay tuned <coughs> because we are going to have a quick break and be back in just a tick. See you after the break. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at two o'clock live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. <laughs> Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Welcome back to Lillian's Vegan World, where we explore everything vegan and about the plant-based diet. I'm here with my special guest, Dave Molinero. Hello, Lillian. 
who is living La Vida <laughs> vegan. <laughs> living La Vida vegan. In your home sweet home. Yes. I just think that's uh, it's very unusual. I haven't met many people who are doing that and who are willing to do that because you are not on a plant-based diet, but your partner, your fiance is. There is a special is. motivation to be on a plant-based diet at home. <laughs> so, yeah. That's Awesome. But it was an easy transition, as we talked about before the break. Yeah, I, th so, I think yeah. people are going to be surprised to hear that because people assume that it's so difficult. But as I've been trying to <clears throat> show over the, the period of my episodes, there are so many vegan substitutes that are delicious and can actually replace that craving for people who genuinely love the taste of meat. So I did actually... Um, ask you to prepare some photos of things that you keep in your freezer just in case like for those I have that those hankering times. for that meat yeah. that I really want so yeah let's yeah. take a look Dave all right um, let's have a look at the first one so these are golden fishless fillets two pieces of these fillets come to about 180 calorie sorry calories nine grams of protein that's pretty good yes um, 12 grams of fat the Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends about 44 to 78 grams of fat a day on a 2,000 calorie a day diet. So that's not too bad. Um, 12, gra yeah, 12 grams of fat, you're looking at a fourth, a fifth of your recommended daily amount of yep. fat. Uh, what did you think of these fishless fillets? They, they're good. Again, they're a great substitute for mm -hmm. um, Again, any of the substitutes that are plant-based taste good, and I've enjoyed these. I'll certainly have them again when sometimes a salad just doesn't satisfy me. I've got to have that um, smack of, hey, it's meat. And Some sort of protein. Some, yeah, and it, it's good. So mm. I do read the labels again looking for that vegan symbol. Yes. Um, one of the things that I... Kind of cautionary about too is you know, look at the sodium content. Yes, um, some of those yeah. tend to be a little bit higher in sodium, yes. so we've got to be careful about that as well too. So. You brought up a good point, and I actually am going to talk about sodium um, as we continue on looking at the products. Okay. So let's have a look at the next one. Walkless bites. They I really like when you look at these. They actually do resemble they do. the real thing, don't they? And that's a great point. I think there's a, it's not just the taste, but it's the the, the smell and yes. obviously the touch and the sight of it. If it looks like it's something you that's familiar to you, that's been a meat product in the past, that, mm -hmm. that helps Definitely. in the transition. Yes, so. these are made from wheat, gluten, and soy protein. Um, one serving is about nine pieces. They are rather small, and for nine pieces, of these porkless, porkless bites, you're going to get 160 calories, 550 milligrams of protein. So they're saying, uh, sorry, of sodium, sodium 500 yeah. mil, mil, 50 milligrams of sodium. The American Heart Association recommends no more than 2,300 milligrams a day and moving toward an ideal limit of no more than 1,500 milligrams a day. At the moment, Dave, Americans are getting 3,600 milligrams of sodium in oh, their I'm diet. Oh, I'm not surprised. So it's almost double, yeah. not quite, yeah. but um, on average. So that's interesting that you, you pointed out, you said that you are concerned about mm -hmm. the sodium in, in some of these processed foods. Yeah, that's a, that is a, it's ubiquitous. Every, there's sodium yes. in every processed yes, food, uh, naturally occurring in other foods mm -hmm. as well too, and yeah. the less the better. Definitely. Yeah. The, lucky, well, the lucky thing, I think, one of the good things about these vegan products that are processed is they are all zero cholesterol. Yeah. Yes, and um, then, then you have the non-GMO. Um, but the sodium, I'm looking at the sodium now, I think they are quite high. Again, these products are not something that you want to be eating on a daily basis. Uh, how often would you eat something oh, like this? Maybe once a week or so. If I yeah. want something special, if yeah. If that, yeah. yeah. That, that, would be, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. That can be... That's very doable, and you you know you won't hurt yourself by doing that. It's but important you have these particular bites with your the appropriate beverage mm -hmm. as well, too. Yes, to definitely enhance the um, enhance the experience even more. <laughs> Put very well. <laughs> Let's have a look at the next image. The meatless meatballs. 
these are, these would be great just tossed tossed through with pasta, wouldn't they? Absolutely. Zero cholesterol again. Fourteen grams of protein in three meatballs and uh, coming to one hundred and fifty calories. These have 80 milligrams of sodium per three meatballs. Again, a little bit higher, but if you're, if you're saying, if you're looking at a 1,500 to 2,000 milligram sodium limit a day, then 80 milligrams really isn't that too bad. Isn't no, it's not. too bad. No, it's not. Yes. One thing I want to point out too, if, to make that transition to vegan is mm -hmm. um, learning to identify that the package says it's vegan. That's yes. a big deal. Some uh, a lot of packaging is getting better where it's really obvious there's yes. a standardized um, mm -hmm. symbol for vegan. But uh, again, a novice getting into this for the first time, trying to identify stuff that was vegan, I Absolutely. was literally scrolling down yes. the labels and it was, it was a challenge. Yeah, but. especially some of the, the um, <clears throat> cheeses yes. and stuff like that. Yes. Some of them are, are not vegan, but That's they true. say, uh, I can't think off the top of my head now, but yeah, you do have to find that word, make sure that yeah. word appears on the product if that's, what you're, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they, all these things are, uh, are really great ideas for people that are just wanting to reduce the, the amount of meat or animal products, products that they're consuming. I myself, Dave, don't eat any of these. I don't I eat understand. anything that looks yeah. like meat or resembles meat or tastes like meat or has that texture sure. because of how I became vegan was through my vegetarian childhood and uh, I just don't associate meat with food anymore. So. And I respect that a great mm -hmm. deal. Um, that may or may not appeal to certain people, but it, again, uh, reducing some of the processed foods mm -hmm. as some of these substitute products are, yep. you're better off. But I completely yes. understand and acknowledge the fact that, that eating a meatless diet resonates with you for for different reasons. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. So these are yeah, these are great ideas anyway if you're wanting to yeah, eat more plant based. Let's have a look at the next one. The Bubba, Bubba Burger. Burger. I kind of love the yeah. name of this <laughs> patty. It's it's a patty with hearty chunks of vegetables, black beans and rolled oats. One burger patty is 110 calories. That's quite low. 1 milligram of iron, not very high unfortunately. The recommended daily amount for iron is 8 grams for men under 50 and 18 grams for women under 50 to compensate for mm. menstrual loss. Adults over 50 need around 8 milligrams of iron per day. This has only one. So when you want to get your iron levels up, eat lots of uh, leafy greens, lentils, beans, nuts, seeds, whole grains and dried fruit especially dried apricots. Oh, I think See, we I'm, have some in, our, yes, in my refrigerator in your, right now. Yes. Absolutely. Oh. So. I, I didn't know that. I always say during the show and to like in my workshops, I'm learning something new every day myself. You can never, you can never learn enough on this plant-based diet. It's, it's really interesting. So yes, dried apricots have a lot of iron apparently. So, But I want to nice roll back time. to what you just said. There are you can get all the nutrients and vitamins and minerals that you need in eating a plant-based diet. Yes, so. you can. Yep. There's, there's definitely something to be said about this diet. And I think you are, it's really interesting talking to you and about how you do it because you don't have that pressure of someone forcing you to do this yep. or trying to turn you vegan. It's just in your home you have chosen yes. and or together have chosen to to make your home in that particular particular way, but you do have the um, the freedom to go out and eat what you want as well, Absolutely. which is you kind of get the best of both worlds. So you don't you don't even have have to you know give up meat all of a sudden. You can do it slowly or be vegan till evening. There or, there is a a certain pressure if you say you are going to become vegan. That's a difficult transition for somebody mm -hmm. again like yourself that you you were born a vegetarian. You transitioned to being a vegan. Uh, for me, it's something that's never been a real of collective course. conscience for me, mm -hmm. but to realize that there are other options out there and to be able to eat plant-based food, I, I'm, it's been a great uh, transition. And knowing that I can, there's not that going cold turkey, for lack of a, right. probably a bad analogy. Yeah, <laughs> vegan I, I show. <laughs> yeah it's not really. <laughs> but it's good. It's but, a, it, but yeah, I, I, being forced into it wouldn't, wouldn't work for anybody. Uh -huh. So 
Um, if there are people out there that are looking to become vegans, I think making that transition, uh, being encouraged and realizing there are a lot of great uh, resources, i.e. Lillian, um, to help with that transition is, is good. Awesome. It's really good. Yeah, Makes I things appreciate easy. that. All right, Dave, let's have a look at the next thing that you keep in your freezer tucked away. Now, these are great, yeah. these little instant meals, the sweet potato quinoa bowl. Quinoa is a nutritious whole grain rich in protein, dietary fiber, B vitamins, gluten free. And it's, a, it has, it's one of the very few plant foods that contain all nine um, amino acids. Mm. So the, the quinoa is a superfood. I bought it because it was vegan. And this was one of the first products I was mm -hmm. able to find that was vegan. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, an easy, again, easy transition. And they're really tasty, too. So. Really, yeah. These are a great idea. I, have, I myself have never, ever tried one of these little meals. But I, I really should just to see what they taste like. That kind of looks appetizing. You've got the quinoa, there's sweet potato. Some, looks like beans in there, mm -hmm. black beans, kale. Also contains kale. Kale, so. a particular favorite. <laughs> do you eat a lot of kale? Yes, I do eat a lot of kale. <laughs> and you obviously enjoy it. Love it. I do. Can't get enough kale. Yes, I do eat a lot of kale. Can't get enough of it. <laughs> what's one of the favorite thing? Oh. What's one of your favorite vegan foods? I'm sure you've tested and tried a lot the of vegan stuff. wines. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy a good salad. All kidding aside, um, there has been what have I? I think I've enjoyed eating breads that I know are vegan. Okay. Um, but there is just Dave, well, I'm gonna give a whole you wide that. range of great foods, as you know. <laughs> there is. Um, so make sure you pick up a bottle of wine before you come home tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Oh, it was okay. great talking to you. Um, look forward to spending the rest of my life with you. <laughs> Lillian, I <Aish> studio. <laughs> I studio. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next week. Aloha. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend.